and welcome to What the Math. In today's video, we're going to be continuing chapter 15 of IB Math Studies and working with trigonometry. But this time, we're going to be taking a look at three dimensional problems. So, basically, uh, trigonometry problems using 3D shapes. And the way we're going to do this is by taking a look at a few examples, specifically the two more common examples in this particular chapter. And also, I'll give you some suggestions on how to deal with these problems and how to solve them as well. So let's actually take a look at the first example. And here it is. It's example 11 uh, from chapter 15. And here we have a rectangular prism. So this is a 3D shape. And uh, we, you have the dimensions here. There's 14 centimeters, 11 centimeters, and 6 centimeters. And what you have to do is you have to find the angle between diagonal AB. Let's actually underline it. So we have diagonal AB that we don't actually see here, but it's, it is in three dimensions. So it's actually from point B to point A and the edge BC. So this edge right here. So here's the difficult part here. You have to realize that the triangle that we're looking at is actually sort of lying like this sideways, not sideways, but it's actually slanted and it's a right triangle as well. And so here's the hard part that you have to try to imagine. There's actually a triangle inside. This is a right triangle that's sort of slanted. It's sort of on the side like this. And it's uh, it's lying inside this rectangular prism. And what you're looking for is you're looking for this angle that is right here, the angle in between them. And so what we need to do is we need to find this angle. So um, first, let's look at what's missing and what we need to find. And then let's try to figure out how to find this angle. So once you actually realize that this is the triangle we're looking for. And once you find the right cross section and, and you're able to kind of dissect this prism into two, di two dimensional shapes so that you can actually use trigonometry, you can start looking for the missing parts. So to find this particular angle, we need to have at least two sides, right? To find the ratio uh, in trigonometry, you need to have two sides. Now, do we have AB? Well, not really, but we can possibly find this. Do we have BC? Yes, we do. So this is possibly something we can use for either tangent or cosine of this angle. And then we can also use this. We can use AC to find uh, to find the, the ratio as well. So can we find AC? Well, of course we can. Look at that. So uh, we have a triangle that is inside here as well. There's actually a right triangle that goes like this, right? And AC is a hypotenuse of triangle that doesn't really have name, but let's call it ACD. And this hypotenuse equals to obviously, or basically it's hypotenuse AC equals to square root of six square plus 11 squared. This is Pythagoras theorem. And so we can actually find AC this way. And if you find AC, you will discover that it equals to Let's use a calculator for this. So AC equals to square root of 157 or 12.5. So AC is 12.5, 12.5 centimeters. Now, so we have AC now, we have this particular side, we can actually change the color and we have this side. So can we find, um, can we actually find this angle now? Well, yes, of course we can use the tangent uh, to find uh, this particular angle because this AC is the opposite side and BC is the adjacent side. So here, the tangent of, let's just call it angle B, this is going to be angle B, tangent of B equals to the opposite side or AC divided by the adjacent side BC. Or in other words, it equals to 12.5 divided by 14. So this is the ratio of this particular angle. 12.5 divided by 14 is 0.89. So what we need to do now is to find this angle, what we need to do is to use the inverse tangent. If we use inverse tangent of 12.5 divided by 14, we're going to be able to find this angle, angle B. And in other words, if we were to do the inverse tangent of this answer that I just re received on my calculator, uh, you will get 41.8. So the angle here, angle B is approximately 41.8 degrees. And that is it. This is how you find this particular angle. So here's what I did. Step number one, 
make sure that you understand what you're looking for. So find the right cross section in the 3D shape. So the, here I had to cut my triangle in such a way that I actually realized that I was looking at this triangle that was slanted and sort of sideways. And uh, I made sure that I drew it so that I, I can see it um, easily. So step number one here was to draw the right cross section. Cross section. And uh, st step number two was identify what's missing and what side we're actually, what sides we have and what sides we need. So identify the missing sides. Missing sides. And finally, step number three is use cosine or sine or tangent to find the angle, to find missing angle, to find the missing angle. So here we decided to use tangent or that we could have used many other things. We could have used cosine or sine if we actually found AB, but finding AB is actually a little bit more tricky. Uh, finding the actual edge AB would require us to first look at uh, we have, we'll have to first find this particular side right here using Pyth Pythagoras theorem. And then using these two sides, we would have to find the actual hypotenuse AB. So it would take an extra step here. So we decided to take a shortcut and use tangent instead. So let's take a look at the similar example, but a little bit, uh, a little bit different. So it's a very similar example using prisms, but a little bit different. And this is example 14 from the same chapter. And we're, uh, we're looking at another prism here, also given uh, the values of its sides, and we're looking for angle between the following line segments, so here we have A and B, and the bottom part, so the bottom plane of the prism, so this plane right here. So essentially we have to find the right triangle, uh, and then try to find the angle between this plane and the the line so dg is actually relatively easy you can try this yourself dg is right here this is dg but we're going to take a look at b actually bh so uh here this is our plane this is our plane here and we're looking at the angle between that and bh so it's a very similar question actually except that the angle now is actually going to be uh, right here, so it's the angle between the actual plane and the uh, the line. So in other words, we're looking for this triangle that kind of goes like this. So there's a right triangle right here. I'm gonna make it green so that you can actually see it. So once again, I have to find the right cross section, and this is the cross section we're looking at. So this triangle right here, it's a little bit different from previous triangle because it's not sideways this time. It's actually just straight up, and uh, this is a right triangle. This is one of its sides. It's four centimeters. This side right here, HF, we don't actually have. So we have to find HF or possibly BH. If you want to use hypotenuse, you may want to find BH. But I personally think that HF is easier because it, there is only one step involved. So here, to find HF, we know that HF squared equals to HG squared, which is six, plus GF squared, which is five. Uh, this is Pythagoras theorem, so here 36 plus 25 uh, equals to hf squared, so hf equals to square root of 61. So this side, let's actually change its color for now because we found this. So hf right here, this diagonal within uh, the plane is square root of 61. Well, we're not going to actually go ahead and calculate this yet, we're going to keep it as this. And let's take a look at if we have enough information to find this angle. So the angle we're looking at is the angle between HF and HB. So we have HF, we also have BF, and this means that we can once again use the tangent. So here we can use the tangent to find the angle, let's call it angle H, tangent of H. So let's rewrite this, tangent of H, equals to the opposite side, which is BF, divided by HF, which we just found. And BF is 4, HF is square root of 61. Uh, so this will give us the ratio for this tangent. And specifically on your calculator, you want to do this. You want to do inverse tangent of 4 divided by square root of 61. Now just enter this and it will give you the exact value for this angle. 
So in inverse tangent of 4 divided by square root of 61, just enter it directly without changing anything and it will give you the angle 27.1. So the angle here is 27.1 degrees. And so this is the final answer for this particular question. Now try DG yourself, see if you can do it yourself. It's a little bit easier, it doesn't involve this extra step because you already have all the values that are given to you. Now this is basically the essence of how to do 3D problems. So there's always a few steps involved. So step number one is always to try to identify the right triangle that you're going to be taking a look at. And this is of course when you're given, um, when you ask to find the angle or you're given the angle. So find that right triangle. You may have to cut it in such a way that you actually can see it very, very easily. So you, I would really recommend drawing the actual triangle so that you can actually visualize it. Then find at least two sides inside the triangle so that you can actually use sine, cosine, or tangent. So you can either use hypotenuse or the legs of the right triangle. And then use the, if you're looking for an angle, use inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. Or if you're actually asked, um, or if you're given the angle and you're asked to find a missing side, you may have to use normal sine, cosine, or tangent and find the value of, um, of a missing side or value of x. So this is how it's done. Uh, there's a few other questions that you may see, such as, for example, this question here. And this question here involves a cone with, a, with an angle here. So this question is a little bit trickier. And actually, I would really, really recommend you try this by yourself. Um, but essentially what it involves is uh, remembering what the formula for um, a volume of a cone is. And also remembering that a cone, if you look at it from the side, is actually basically an isosceles triangle that has two right triangles inside. So this is what you're going to be doing. And this angle, of course, is going to be 20 degrees. And so this is how you do all these problems. You always try to convert the 3D shapes into 2D shapes and then solve them using uh, this type of logic. And of course, in this cone, since the radius is 30, you can easily find the hypotenuse or the height. And I believe, yeah, you have to find the height. So to find the height, you would then use the cosine of 20 degrees. Uh, so try this yourself, see if you can do it. And I'm going to actually give you a solution right here on the bottom uh, while you're trying this yourself. And I actually made a mistake. It's not a cosine that we're going to be using here, but tangent. So 30 divided by x equals to tangent of 20 degrees. And here, if you re rearrange this, you'll get x equals to 30 divided by tangent of 20. And so the answer is... 82.4 centimeters and that's the height of this cone so the height is 82.4 and for question b and you can actually use your formula sheet to find what the volume of the cone is and i'm going to cheat and use the google uh google calculator so here we have radius of 30 and radius or oh, sorry the height is 82.4 that's what we just found and so this is in centimeter cube 77,000.6 uh centimeter cube and that's the capacity of this particular cone now you may have to express this in liters so that would be 77.6 thousand um milliliters or you can convert this to liters which will i believe give you 77.6 liters so and the answer is 77.6 liters or 77,600 milliliters so this is that is the capacity of cone um that is right here and it's here it says that you have to find any leader so that's the final answer right here now um this would be a more difficult type of a question where you have to use a combination of geometry specifically the volume formula that is in your formula sheet and of course the trigonometry so whenever you see an angle right away you have to you have to try to think okay i have to use trigonometry i have to go to sine cosine and tangent thing and I have to find the right triangle in here and then i have to try to figure this out so as soon as you see an angle Try to divide this into a right triangle. So there's a right triangle right here. And then try to solve this using sines, cosines, and tangents. Anywho, so this is the essence of 3D geometry using trigonometry. Hopefully this was clear and hopefully you can now do this yourself. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye-bye.